Docker images are built and Docker images are pushed to Docker Hub. We want to pull images from Docker Hub and deploy those containers into Kubernetes. If you check Docker Hub, my account, this is our uh, Docker image. And if you see tags, right, these are the images recently pushed through our uh, Jenkins pipeline code. Okay, so fine. So I want to show you a couple of files related to Kubernetes. Those files are uh, pods. So I have YAML file where we are describing the pod we want to create inside the cluster. In this file, right, I declared one, uh, what is that, placeholder, which is tag version. I want to dynamically change this uh, tag version inside this file every time I build. So for example, if I'm building this app, right, I want to replace this one with the current Docker image version and deploy that to Kubernetes cluster and so on. So that is about pods.yaml and the other file is service services.yaml. So usually we put pods in front of services such that we will have something static to reach the pod. For example, if we have a client which talks to that pod using its IP, so in Kubernetes, pods are expected to terminate or restart and the IPs will change dynamically. So because of that, we use services which will be uh, staying in the cluster forever and the IPs will not change. But these things we can discuss more in some other video. So in this case, right, we're going to create two resources. One is service, the other one is pod. And that pod will be created. In front of that pod, we're going to place the service and it's going to create a load balancer in Amazon Web Services. Using that, we can access our pod. Okay, so getting back to pods.yaml, I need to dynamically change this tag version, right? For changing that value dynamically, I have written a very tiny shell script using SED. It takes pods.yaml as input, it's going to find this uh, value and replace that value with latest tag. That's okay. Let's write a stage. So deploy to Kubernetes, fine. So inside stage, we must have uh, steps. So inside steps, right? So first of all, I want to give execute permissions to my script so i'm adding execute permissions to my script okay in the next line i want to execute that script to this script i want to pass my input which is our tag. I'm calling this script and I'm passing one argument to this script. See that I'm searching for tag version. I'm picking the first argument from for this script, replacing this tag version with this first argument. So what happens now? In this pods.yaml, this is replaced with the latest tag and that latest image is deployed into Kubernetes cluster. Once we are done with all those changes, I want to connect to my Kubernetes cluster and deploy service and pod. We can do this in several ways. We have Jenkins plugin directly. 
uh, using which we can connect to the cluster and deploy all our resources but I don't want to use any plugin I want to use some other plugin for connecting to this COPS machine okay uh, once I connect to this COPS machine from there I can run kubectl create and pods.yaml and services.yaml so first I want to do this SSH into this specific machine so if you want to SSH into that specific machine we have a plugin SSH agent so I want to install uh, SSH agent okay manage Jenkins manage plugins so go to available and find for SSH agent we're not finding anything under available probably it's already installed let me check there yeah so you make sure you install SSH agent plugin okay then I want to store username password of my uh, cops machine so go to credentials Jenkins global add so we have SSH username with private key Ops mission cops username is ec to user and I have private key on my uh, local desktop I'll, I'll copy that and I'll put it here it's nothing but see for connecting to this uh, I have this uh, key which is in my local that I want to store here in offline I have uh, copied that text and save it right cops yeah so go to pipeline syntax generator yeah search for this SSH agent we have cops right generate the script right yeah so first of all I want to copy my uh, kubernetes resources services.yaml and uh, node app iPhone port.yaml so why I'm using node app instead of uh, ports.yaml let me show that if you check change tag.sh it takes ports.yaml and it dynamically replaces the tag and it creates new file which is uh, node app pod.yaml that's why I'm using that node iPhone app iPhone pod.yaml copying that YAML file into this COPS machine so I'm using a strict host key checking no because there will be a prompt when our uh, Jenkins connects to that machine first time I want to suppress that prompt so all right so after copying that file I want to execute uh, the following command uh, inside my uh, cops machine so I want to put scripts here so I'm using a script block okay so I'm connecting to this machine and on that machine I'm running kubectl apply f dot so the current location on that machine will be this these two files are present in the same location it reads these two files and submits that information to kubernetes cluster so why i'm using try catch here right so when we are deploying this resource first time it won't exist if it doesn't exist apply fails and it comes to catch block it creates it 
the point is if resources doesn't exist we need to call create which creates the resources next time onwards right resources will exist uh, if i call create again that's going to throw exception so next time onwards instead of calling create we have to call apply so that's why i'm using a simple script with try and catch blocks to repeat it when i run this script first time apply fails because we don't have any existing resources it goes to catch block it creates resources for us second execution onwards right resources will exist and this will not throw any exception it never comes to this catch block so that's all uh, from jenkins uh, pipeline wise let me commit push and execute the code so i want to push that Go to Jenkins, KHS, build it. So perfect, right? We successfully deployed uh, Kubernetes resources into the cluster. So let me do one thing let's connect to this machine and see what our uh, jenkins pipeline script has done okay keep ctl get pods yeah this is the pod created by our jenkins file keep ctl get service and if you see it created node app service of type load balancer which created the load balancer so if i hit my load balancer on this endpoint with 80 right that routes traffic to our a pod of course right the application got deployed successfully let's do one thing let me change something in the application and let me rerun the code and see if it is successfully deployed or not so go there node app right let me edit this script let's make it version 2 and let's change the color to black commit after committing it build job executed successfully let me call uh, kubectl get pods refresh this code Fine, right it's successfully deployed so we have seen end-to-end -end CICD process for uh, deploying docker applications onto kubernetes cluster thank you